And like a dutiful son, covered up all traces of the crime he was convinced his mother had committed. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at memorable movie serial killers. You're to tell him nothing personal, Starling. Believe me, you don't want Hannibal Lecter inside your head. These killers must be fictional characters, and they must be unambiguously human. So we'll be excluding the likes of Jason, Michael, and Freddy. Number 10, Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. They all deserve to die. Tell you why, Mrs. Lovitz, tell you why. There are dark musicals, and then there's Sweeney Todd. The acclaimed play was adapted to film in 2007, with Johnny Depp portraying the titular serial killer. Played to macabre perfection by Depp, Sweeney Todd is a deranged barber who slits the throats of his victims and has their remains baked into meat pies. Here we are. Oh. At the oven. What is that? It's priest. Have a little priest. He kills at least 10 people in the movie, including a number of innocent customers, evil Judge Turpin, and even his partner in crime, Mrs. Lovett, whom he burns inside of an oven. We place a lot of trust in barbers, especially when they get near our throats with a straight razor. To watch that trust betrayed is completely chill-inducing. I had it! His throat was bare beneath my hand. There, there, dear, calm down. No, I had it! His throat was there and he'll never come again. Crazy. Number 9. Peter and Paul. Funny Games. Sie wird mit uns, dass sie morgen um 9 noch leben, wir mit ihnen, dass sie tot sind. Okay? Mikhail Haneke's subversive horror film has drawn incredible controversy since its release in 1997. It concerns two young men named Peter and Paul, who torment and eventually kill the Schober family in their holiday home. Ziehen wir das Messerchen vor? Oder das Schießgewehr? The biblical names of Peter and Paul are immediately noticeable, and almost certainly an intentional choice on the part of Hanukkah. Three humans and one dog become victims of Peter and Paul, and at the end of the film, it's implied that they will also kill neighbors Gerda and Robert, bringing their body count to at least six. Their motive is entirely unknown, and we infer that they do it simply for sadistic entertainment. The idea that people like that actually exist is a truly terrifying thought. Die Frist ging doch bis neun. Sie hätte noch fast eine Stunde gehabt. Erstens war das Segen so zu mühsam. Und außerdem habe ich langsam Hunger. Das ist wahr. <lacht> Number 8. Pearl, the X-Franchise. It's real nice to be able to talk to someone for a change. Been cooped up on that farm for so long, sometimes I worry that maybe I'm not the same as other people. Ty West crafted a modern classic with his X series, which chronicles the life of a serial killer named Pearl. The series is quite creative in that it spans multiple decades and styles, portraying Pearl as both an aged woman and youthful aspiring actress. Whatever her age, Pearl is an incredibly dangerous individual, and she's played to perfection by Mia Goth, even under 20 layers of makeup. Why won't you look at me? Look at me like you looked at her. She kills several people in Pearl, including her own parents, but that's just the beginning. Her psychopathy continues well into old age, and she kills more with her husband Howard and X. We can only imagine how many lives she took in the interim. Actually, we don't want to think about that. Howard? I'm so happy you're home. Number 7. Mickey and Mallory Knox, Natural Born Killers. I'm a natural born killer. A divisive film, Natural Born Killers is a scathing indictment of mass media and its obsession with violence. The grislier, the better. The story follows Mickey and Mallory Knox, two mass murderers played to eerie perfection by Woody Harrelson and Juliette Lewis. Along the way, they become national celebrities, known far and wide for their almost mythical killing spree. It's just murder, man. All God's creatures do it in some form or another. The couple murders dozens of people before getting caught, and they murder many more while breaking out of prison. Even scarier than their ridiculous body count is their total lack of empathy, with Mickey calling himself a natural-born killer. There's nothing scarier than that. Guess when you just gotta hold that old shotgun in your hand and it comes clear like it did for me the first time. That's when I realized my one true calling in life. Number six, Billy Loomis and Stu Mocker, Scream. Yeah, Casey and Steve are completely hollowed out. And the fact is it takes a man to do something like that. For a man's mentality. There are a ton of ghost faces throughout this iconic series, but come on, we have to go with the OGs. 
One gone insane from past trauma and the other just along for the ride, Billy and Stu make one of the creepiest movie duos. Surprise, Sydney. They partner up to conduct the Woodsboro murders, killing a total of six people throughout two years. How do you gut someone? You take a knife and you slit them from groin to sternum. Their spree begins with Sydney's mother Maureen and continues to include the school principal, a news cameraman, and even Stu's girlfriend. It doesn't really matter who gets in their way. They will die, and often quite violently. Casey's death is an all-timer, and it alone places Billy and Stu in the Horror Villain Hall of Fame. You never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name? I want to know who I'm looking at. Number five, Patrick Bateman, American Psycho. Would you like to hear the Double absolute martini. Yes, sir. Would you like to hear the specials? Not if you want to keep your spleen. Like Natural Born Killers, this is a film with deeper thematic ambitions than mere entertainment. Often seen as a black satire, American Psycho lets you know what you're getting from the very title. He's American, and he's a psycho. What more do you want? The psycho, of course, is Patrick Bateman, a Wall Street yuppie who moonlights as a serial killer. I like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Patrick is truly deranged, obsessed with nothing but status and murder. He takes 17 lives throughout the course of the movie, including one dog. But he confesses to Harold that he's killed up to 40. Much of Patrick's eeriness comes through Christian Bale's dead-eyed performance, portraying a soulless husk of a man who has lost any semblance of humanity he may have once had. I don't want to leave anything out here. I guess I've killed maybe 20 people, maybe 40. Number four, Jigsaw, the Saw franchise. Most people are so ungrateful. Sure, you can make the argument that John Kramer never actually killed anyone, but come on, that would never hold up in court. He's a serial killer through and through, a broken man who kidnaps people and subjects them to horrific life lessons. Uh, let's put the biggest quotation marks possible around those words. Those who don't appreciate life do not deserve life. My son appreciates his life. Jigsaw has a truly warped mind, not only believing that what he's doing is right, but subjecting people to grotesque traps that often result in their painful deaths. Maybe we can sympathize with Jigsaw's tragic backstory, but what he did with it is, shall we say, a little difficult to digest. In fact, it is one of the most deplorable things we've ever seen in movies. I could use your assistance in locating some people that are in need of our services. Number three, John Doe, seven. Wait a minute, I thought all you did was kill innocent people. Innocent? Is that supposed to be funny? Fed up with the state of the world, John Doe orchestrated his murder spree around the seven deadly sins, with each of his victims representing a different sin. John claimed a total of seven lives throughout his spree, including Rachel Slade, who took her own life after John mutilated her face. Come on. Cut off her nose despite her face. Each of these deaths is devastating and horrific in their own right, but David Fincher saves the worst for last, delivering a crushing plot twist that has reverberated throughout pop culture. John Doe is the scariest type of killer, obviously apathetic and cruel, but also manipulative and very, very smart. And worst of all, he wins. Oh. He didn't know. Number two, Norman Bates, Psycho. We all go a little mad sometimes. Anthony Perkins gives one of the all-time great villain performances portraying the twisted Norman Bates. What makes Norman so scary is his deceptive charm. He's a very attractive and well-dressed man, and he comes across as very friendly, albeit with some major mommy issues. Can you have a vacancy? No, oh, we have 12 vacancies. But that's obviously hiding a very violent reality, with Norman often dressing as his dead mother and killing the female guests of his hotel. He kills two people on screen, but the psychiatrist reveals that he's murdered four others, bringing his body count to six. Of those four, two were innocent women, and the others were his own mother and her lover. I hope they are watching. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know and they'll say, why she wouldn't even harm a fly. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Hannibal Lecter, 
the Hannibal Lecter franchise. Oh, he's a monster. Pure psychopath. So rare to capture one alive. And speaking of deceitful, here we come to the most deceitful villain of them all. Playing Hannibal Lecter must be an incredibly difficult assignment. Like Norman Bates, he's charming, but not so charming that you immediately lower your guard. No matter how friendly he appears, there's always an obvious undercurrent of darkness, whether it comes through in a malicious glance or an offhanded comment. Closer, please. Closer. In the Anthony Hopkins canon, including Hannibal Rising, Lecter has a confirmed 26 kills, not including a number of proxy deaths and attempted murders. And yes, most of these victims were cannibalized to some degree. He's an utterly terrifying figure, and Hopkins gives a masterful performance depicting his predatory behavior. I think I'll eat your heart. Which of these killers scared you the most? Let us know in the comments below. Well, not anymore. I'm setting the example. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.